what does it mean to be strong? It implies hardness and flexibility. Okinawa is a place with a fighting tradition, a history of ferocious resistance. But it's nothing like what you might think. Not at all. This is Okinawa, just south of mainland Japan. For all the relative rigidity of the mainland, Okinawa answers in its own unique way. Don't eat the same thing each day. That's boring. There's even an Okinawan term for it, champuru, something mixed. Bits borrowed from all over, served up for anyone to eat. But maybe you're more familiar with the name Okinawa from this as the setting for some of the most horrifyingly bloody battles of the Second World War. How horrifying? For the Allies, there were more than 50,000 casualties, with around 12,000 killed or missing in action over nearly three months of fighting. More than 100,000 Japanese soldiers and Okinawan conscripts were killed defending the island. Civilians were stuck in the middle of the two armies and got crushed. No one will know for sure, but historians estimate 150,000 men, women, and children lost their lives during the battle. What most don't know is that Okinawa had only become Japan fairly recently. That to a great extent, Okinawans didn't even consider themselves really Japanese, or vice versa. That Okinawans and Japanese considered themselves to be different ethnicities, spoke two different languages, and culturally, culinarily, and in many other ways, looked in different directions. Yet, Okinawans were asked to make the ultimate sacrifice, and they did. That's not just ancient history. It informs the present still. Okinawa is the largest of over 100 islands making up the Ryukyu Island chain. It's just over 300 miles from the mainland, but worlds apart. Okinawa is different. It's tropical. Clear waters, some of the best beaches in Asia, to the decidedly more laid back, less frenetic, self-serious attitude than the mainland. You can feel it. You can see it. It's just different here. thousand pounds of heavily muscled beef enters the arena. You could feel the ground shake under its heavy hooves. His opponent awaits. Togyo, also known as Ushizumo. Sumo, yes, but bull sumo. These are professionals. And like Jake LaMotta and Chuck Wepner before them, they shall live to fight or do other stuff another day, having shed decidedly less blood than either of those two gentlemen. <laughs> two animals, two handlers. And they do like the Burgess Meredith job in Rocky. And like fighters or sumo, the bulls are ranked by their ability, their record in the ring, the highest being Yokozuna. This is Kenny Amen. He lives up the road. Is there a time limit, or they just go till somebody gives up? I think they pretty much go until somebody gets gives up. But when it gets there's around no the point th system, no, no, there's no point system. Basically, when the other one turns around and runs away, as the winner, a few times one bull will actually get around to the side and actually be able to flip the bull over. The winner and loser survive. Both. Once in a while, you'll have uh, injuries, but most most of the time, the bulls go home and. Uh, to go home to be happy. <laughs> Nobody's turned in a steak or cutlets. No. Togyu started as early as the 17th century with farmers pinning bull against bull. They love it in agricultural communities like this, so much so that it was briefly banned in some places because farmers were spending too much time at the fights and not enough time growing sugarcane. Like Customato and the young Tyson, their handlers raise these beasts from calves, caring for them on one hand, and training them, conditioning them to be monsters in the ring on the other. Oh. 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 Does one wager?
you run this? I guess the, uh, the official answer would be that gambling's illegal in Japan, but... <laughs> Intermission. Time for a corn dog, some funnel cake, curly fries? No. Better. Much better. Yakitori. Yes, they have that. But when in Okinawa, do as the Okinawans do. Yakisoba. Start with pork belly, as one always should, some hacked up sausage, cabbage, carrots, fry that stuff up on the griddle, add some chukamen noodles and sauce, soy, mirin, brown sugar, vinegar, and a bit of sake. Top with seaweed powder, some pickled ginger garnish, and eat. Now. Oh, he looks impressive. Oh, yeah. Oh, he's, he's ready to go. This guy, I think, is going to win this one. <laughs> yeah, well, we haven't seen his opponent. Oh, yeah. My money's on him. In a castle. Decisive winner there. I'm not accusing anybody of gambling, but um, <laughs> I see some money changing hands. <laughs> he can do it, I can do it. God damn it. If you're looking for sushi or kaseki or ramen, you will, of course, find them in Okinawa. But what you need to know, what you must know, is that in Okinawa, pork is king. Okay, they got tofu, too. Here at Urizun, they do specifically Okinawan food the Okinawan way. Hi, arigato. This is the tofu yo, which okay. you just eat a little at a time. Is that that strong? It is a little strong, yeah. It has like a, a cheese type of texture. That's good. Not bad, right? It is like blue cheese. Mm -hmm. Ah, pork belly? Yes. Okinawans love pork. Every part of the magical animal, the pig. At Orizun, the pork belly is slowly cooked in stock heavily infused with bonito flakes and awamori. The ears are simmered until tender, thinly sliced and dressed in rice wine vinaigrette. And the ribs, after brining and sake and seasonings, are slowly roasted. So you grew up in New Jersey. Um, how did you find your way to Okinawa? Well, my mom, my mom was from here. My dad was in the Navy. Mm -hmm. He was stationed here, met my mom, and wound up back in New Jersey, because that's where my dad was from, Patterson. and I. I was born and raised there. Uh, the school I went to it, it was predominantly Caucasian kids. Mm -hmm. uh, there wasn't many Asian Americans at all. Right. And I always had this kind of like identity complex. There would be like times where people would come to the house. They'd say, oh, where's your mom from? Is she from China? Oh, God, yeah, right. Yeah, open the refrigerator and there'd be some weird food. You know, hey, what's that? What are you? And every time I heard that, I was like, wow. Am I like, am I different? And then all of a sudden, one day my mom says, we're going back to Okinawa on a family trip. I was 17 years you've old. you've never been up to that point? No. But when I got off the plane, I don't know what it was. It was like, I'm here. This is my home. Being able to connect my heritage, I felt something. I was like, wow, I belong here. How about the food? What was in that refrigerator? <laughs> because I know a lot of kids who grew up with that same sort of uh, uncertainty when they brought their friends home from school to their house and opened their refrigerator. Uh, you know, if uh, kimchi or cabbage or fish sauce, they were aware of it when they visited their friends sure. and they were acutely uncomfortable with it when their friends came over. Man, have things changed as far as attitudes. Um, be pretty much the engine of the new American cuisine are kids with childhoods like yours. And, and I don't mean just what's hip, what's the next big thing. I mean, literally redefining what is, what is American cuisine. 
Let's put it this way. The central irony of this story is that, you know, your mom would have been like a hipster hero of New Jersey now. <laughs>
all kind of people are happy, all lucky people. Do you think that easygoing, um, that reputation, that tradition of, of uh, being happy-go-lucky, do you think that this has led to Okinawans being taken advantage of? I mean, for instance, uh, the U.S. military bases. Okinawa is 1% of the landmass of Japan, and yet what percentage of the military bases are here on, on Okinawa? Almost all of them. Okinawa seems to be asked to make a lot of sacrifices uh, for the mainland. Will, will that ever stop? You, you are talking about the Nimbi. Not in my backyard. Yes, yes. <laughs>
a, an accurate representation of what you're doing? Well, the basis of Okinawan karate is that it was used primarily as a, as a defensive art. Um, in other words, being able to you know, control and subdue the opponent, usually if you could in a, in a humane way, but then if you had to right. finish them, then, then you had the ability to finish them. The striking is important, but a lot of the technique is not about striking, it's about uh, submission techniques. Yeah. Some of that is to do with um, Kyusho, so attacking nerve points. And the uh, Hokama Sensei in particular is extremely skilled at um, dealing with uh, you know, bigger, stronger opponents. Human engineering, very important. Point, 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 point. Then this point attack the fingers. No, no knuckle. Open. The demonstration of Hokama Sensei's open hand Kyushu technique becomes a little too real for my taste. <laughs> Awful. Human engineering, with a terrifying logic, one attacks the weak point. All I know how to do in this situation, by the way, is pull guard and look for something to choke or lock. Nope. Apparently, they don't know what tapping out means here, because I was tapping like Western goddamn Union. I thought he was going to push that 71-year-old finger right into my brain pan. There was a saying in the old days that if there was a fight happening somewhere in town, people would, would go and have a look, and they'd say, are they fighting with fists or open hands? And if they were fighting with fists, they'd say, oh, don't bother, it's an amateur fight. If they were fighting with open hands, then they knew they were masters. The U.S. military came ashore in 1945, and to Okinawans, it must seem like they never left. Today, there are roughly 30,000 troops stationed on the island. Put that many Americans in a place, especially young, mostly male Americans, many of them homesick, and it tends to change the environment. In town, just outside of Naha, right by Camp Hansen, one of the larger bases. The Yanks have fought inch by inch to conquer this island. Kin is a small slice of Americana, both the mainstream America and its dark underbelly. The Okinawans have made the kind of adjustments that people do when saddled with neighbors like thousands of Marines, and sometime in the 80s, adjusted food as we knew it to this, a mutant classic, taco rice. Taco and rice. <laughs> That's taco rice. Wow. Wow, it's big. <laughs> <laughs> Is this a chili sauce or was it ketchup? Um, it's the original taco. Oh, it's taco sauce. Taco rice sauce. But it's um, a bit spicy. Oh, good. But not, not super spicy. Vivian Takushi has lived in both the U.S. and Okinawa and her aunt, Sumiko, an entertainer who began singing in American bases after the war. Wow, that's good. There are dueling claims as to how taco rice might have morphed into existence, but Saori Shimabakuro is certain. In the 1980s, American servicemen introduced the standard taco to Okinawans, and her grandfather, Matsugi Ogibo, decided to tweak them dumping the fillings straight onto rice for the late night crowd of Marines coming back from the bars. This unholy, greasy, starchy, probably really unhealthy delight, a booze mop turned classic caught on big time for both Americans missing home and locals. So I, I, I consider myself a pretty pro-military guy, but why are the Marines here? Look, I like Marines, but you know, I'm not Robert McNamara, but it seems to me if you go to war with China, sending in the Marines is probably not what you're going to be doing. People of your generation, what do you think the attitude is towards the military bases? Um, as long as we're not living near the base, right. it doesn't affect us right. that much. Near the base. Near the base. It if makes you, a difference. Right. If I mean, you live look, near it, it. You know right away. I mean, it's tattoo parlors, strip clubs, vape shops. I mean, you know. And also, it's very loud. 
Um, that's a big issue. Mm -hmm. Tourism is probably the future of Okinawa, yes. I mean, beautiful weather. Beaches, uh, if the bases leave. It's going to be big hotels and resorts and golf courses. Which is worse, Chinese tourists or American Marines? I'll stick with the Marines. <laughs> <laughs> Semper Fi. Not everybody here agrees with Vivian by a long shot. Okinawans may be easygoing and laid back, but the island is also a relative hotbed of political activism, largely inspired or provoked by what Okinawans see as high-handed treatment from a central government with different cultural and historical traditions who don't consider their needs or priorities. And their hugely disproportionate shouldering of the U.S. military presence for the entire country. Currently, there are close to 30 military installations on Okinawa. And even though it's one of the smallest Japanese prefectures in terms of livable area, they accommodate more than half of the foreign military presence. Even more problematic, much of Okinawa's arable land suitable for farming on an island whose whole traditional identity was built around farming is eaten up by military bases. The military base issue, is this more important for older people or younger people? No, it's, it's for the older people. It's for the older people? Yes. So when you actually go to a place where they have a, like a protest going on, I would say over 80% of the people are uh, all retired person. Why do you think that is? Um, and then this is only my opinion, but uh, Japanese uh, Imperial Army uh, did a lot of brutal stuff on this island, mm -hmm. and war never ended for some people. And the feelings that they got suppressed all of a sudden, after they retire, they kind of burst, and they want to kind of... Act out. Act out. This is Keiji Yoda. He's an Okinawan farmer. And this is Nishimachi, a small noodle shop that bears only the owner's name and serves only Okinawan-style soba. Pork belly or ribs is the meat, the broth a mix of fish, chicken, pork, and vegetable stocks. Okinawan soba differs greatly from what we know from the mainland. They use wheat noodles instead of buckwheat, a nod perhaps to the spaghetti-eating marines they lived with all these years. Garnishes are spring onion, fish cake, and slices of omelet. Add your pickled ginger and togarashi hot sauce, and hoorah! It seems the anti-base sentiment also coincide with an anti-central government yes. sentiment. You do bear a hugely disproportionate burden of bases. Isn't some activism called for here? I think the young generation should decide what to do for our future instead of the old people just fighting for their beliefs. To me, I really feel a strong need to uh, forgive mm -hmm. and then forget and then move on. Long before the war, the Americans arrived. Long before the Satsuma invaded from the mainland, Okinawa was a kingdom, the Ryukyu Kingdom, a prosperous and peaceful island chain with no standing army. They were farmers, traders, and necessarily diplomats, whose eyes more often than not looked west to China rather than to the more isolated mainland. While Japan, as it existed then, was isolationist, racially and ethnically, culturally, and in every other way, the Ryukyu Kingdom was not. They were more open, more multicultural, more used to and predisposed to dealing with the outside world and its influences. Today, just a short ferry ride from the main island, a sense a feeling of that long-gone empire remains. Kumejima is a small island that has been largely untouched by the changes in the world. People farm and fish as they always did. The war never came here. Uh, no. This is Bunshiro Nagame and Yohina Tomohiro, Kumejima residents and friends of James. So, no, they, they didn't, they suffered very little damage in the war. And uh, no military bases. No American presence. Yeah, I'm a step. 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 I'
Well, up until 72, there was an American base. There was. But then in 72, on the, on the reversion, the base was taken away. No, nothing. Uh, only the Japanese self-defense forces now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What do people do here? Uh, agriculture? Growing sugar cane. I saw. Tourism. Coming. Tourism. <laughs> Fishing. Fishing. Uh, have there been attempts to develop here? And uh, have the locals been able to resist that impulse? Um, he's saying on Kumijima they have rich lives. They have everything they need. They have produce from the land, from the sea. They don't need much else. I've been invited to a beach barbecue, Kumajima style. Go big or go home. To eat some fresh caught tuna that comes straight from the market to be butchered into sashimi. Also caught this morning some sea snails for the grill and mazuku, seaweed, which can be cooked, but today is enjoyed raw and local prawns eaten either raw or grilled or both. Now that looks awesome. Off of the head? There's more. Local beef grilled and then tossed with moyashi, seasoned bean sprouts. We will need our energy, it appears. Tegumi is as old school a martial art as it gets. No ring, no octagon, the rules are simple. Known as Okinawan sumo, Whoa. it looks easy. It's not. Your hands are wrapped in your opponent's belt. Object is to get him onto his back, both shoulders, before he does it to you. Nice. You land on your back for even a second, you lose. Yeah, there you got it, man. Awesome. Would you like to try? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. Yes! <laughs> Go on, Tony. Chibario! In the end, it's a less than smoothly executed judo move, Kosorogake, I believe, that brings my opponent to the ground. Thank you for going easy on me. Awesome. <laughs> So I've given up many vices in my life, many shameful, filthy, guilty pleasures that I used to like that I will, that I just don't do anymore. Uh, cocaine, heroin, prostitutes, uh, the musical stylings of Steven Tyler. Uh, I put aside these childish things, as it were, uh, in favor of uh, a newer, more mature me, but there is one shameful secret. One thing I just can't give up. One thing I keep coming back to every time I come back to Japan. One thing that still has an unholy grip on me for no reason that I can gather. It's the convenience store, formerly of near Akron, Ohio, that mutated into a massive Japanese chain Behold the wonder that is Lawson. What is it exactly about this place that's got its tentacles so deep into my heart and my soul? Where are you? I know you're around here somewhere. Pillows of love. 
egg salad from Lawson. Need a beverage. In Naha, you would be advised to avoid International Avenue. Unless you're homesick for fellow Americans. Head down the side streets. Shuttered storefronts give way to packed izakayas. A few beers, and somebody breaks out a shamisen, and the good times begin. People go out here. And after pounding your fists and feet into hardened meat hooks and shitting out bone chips, you could drop by Dojo Bar. James's refuge, where some of the island's most esteemed masters and their students come for what is recognized internationally as the cure for all martial arts related ailments alcohol. Would you like a drink? I think I would like a beer and maybe a shot of something. Well, I do have a little shot of something. It's a big snake. So the the habashu sake is like the spirit of Okinawa. Now, is this sake or whiskey? This is sake. This is Okinawan sake called awamori. So like a mainland Japanese sake, but then they distill it like whiskey. So it becomes stronger, um, but also it now it'll, it'll age. Um, it's been in here with the snake maybe like three years, because all, all of the essence of the snake has gone out into the alcohol. Saisho no habashu de. Goodbye. There seems to be a conflict of interest here. You train uh, karate very seriously. Yeah. Um, I mean, should you people be drinking? <laughs> this is what I'm asking. Where is the point of diminishing returns? There aren't many teachers who don't drink. The awamori is intrinsic to the Okinawan culture. Right. Um, most enjoy awamori as part of their lifestyle. In the same way that karate is part of their lifestyle. Uh, they're saying, please eat. Uh, Let's talk in more eating. <laughs> Sashimi of well, let's just say it's an animal you like. This is horse meat. Horse. Uh -huh. Uh, 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 <laughs> <laughs> mm, good. And this? Go. <laughs> Goat. Yeah. Ooh, that's good. Pure protein for people who need it. And pork belly, some pickled pig's ears, and baked yam. I watch a lot of uh, mixed martial arts. Uh, I watch a lot of jujitsu. Uh, uh, my daughter trains mostly jujitsu, but but some stand up. <laughs> Some of the most exciting fighters that I've seen lately who really show the most heart uh, are women. Uh, is, there a, is there a future for women in uh, karate? Okinawa de wa ne, Okinawa no bujitsu naka de wa jose wa do desu ka? Yeah, yeah. Kochi kite goran. So here's a female student here tonight. Karate is good. This is Yaya. Tony is asking, what's the future for um, women in traditional karate? When I first started karate, I didn't know this word. And now I'm learning karate as the, in the performance and also in life. Everything is all about love. And karate is showing you if you have this kind of power and the ability to protect yourself, your family, uh, you can be really kind. That's about Okinawa. Okinawa people, I think, always have this love to everyone.